And good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner. Live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torres. Thanks for uh, tuning us in today. Back at it after a week off for regatta coverage. I'm back at it after a couple of weeks off. And, well, we're going to talk football. Believe it or not, we're in July. A little early for football, but not really. I've got brand new Madison football coach Leroy Wilson in with me this morning. Coach, pick up the mic and uh, let's let's go after it a little bit here. Welcome to the community and welcome to Madison Cup football. Thank you, Tim. I'm, I'm really excited to be here and uh, talk some football today. Let's go back and, and kind of talk your your uh, your background a little bit. I always like to, to dive into the, why in the world would you get into coaching and why would you get into football and a little bit about where you grew up and went to school and kind of the progression from there to here. Sure. Um, I grew up in Clarksville, Indiana, so I'm originally from there and, um, you know, played football all my life. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I got into really all the sports, played basketball, played right. baseball growing up, um, and all three in high school, <clears throat> and really was not the best athlete, but uh, I loved playing the games, and uh, growing up, uh, really fell in love with the game of football. And when I got out of high school, joined um, my dad's staff uh, at the middle school there, mm -hmm. and really got into coaching at that point, and really enjoyed it. Uh, so I, I started looking for other opportunities after that. I was about there for about three years. And uh, a coach of mine that was my quarterback coach in high school, Jason Hawkins, who's at Charlestown right now, sure. um, he had the job at Charlestown and he was fairly new there. I think he'd been there three or four years. And uh, so I asked him if I could join his staff as a volunteer. And, and that was kind of my first start into high school football. And uh, was there for a couple years. Uh, got to coach some great athletes there. And uh, from there, I, I moved to Providence. Um, and was there for five years, three of those as the offensive coordinator, and uh, really enjoyed my time. We got to compete against uh, three teams in the HHC, so right. um, you know I got some experience there with those three teams, and uh, it was a great atmosphere, great great place to coach. I really enjoyed my time there. Um, very welcoming community, uh, and uh, really love football there. They really right. do. And uh, so then from there, I, I was able to get my teaching license uh, and went to Seymour, and that's where I was the last three years before coming here, and. Um, Seymour, a great place to work again. They love their football up there. <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, you know, conference foe, but right. um, you know they really do love their football up there. And uh, it was great coaching with uh, Coach Shattuck and Coach Kelly, who was the new coach up there as well, mm -hmm. um, and kind of getting to learn from him a little bit. And as far as you know, being a new coach now, you know, it was great kind of seeing and watching uh, Coach Kelly and how in his transition of being a new head coach and that kind of stuff. So um, I get, did get to learn a lot from him as well. Uh, so you know, realistically, you know, why coaching? Um, uh, to be honest with you, you know, as a kid watching my dad coach me mm -hmm. in all my sports, right. um, he was probably the biggest inspiration that I've had. You know, getting into this, uh, he he coached me in every sport. He was there. He was one of those guys that you know worked nine to five and then went from six to eight coaching whatever sport I was right. playing. You know, I had a younger brother who did the same thing for him, and so it was really great to to you know get to coach with him as well. So having him and then you know other mentors along the way really really helped. You know, Larry Dennison was a great mentor at Providence. Uh, Jason Mullis, who was the defense coordinator there, was a great mentor at Providence. Uh, and of course, Josh Shattuck, who I, I'm still in contact with almost, you know, weekly. Uh, he's now up at Elkhart and, uh, mm -hmm. and doing things up there really, you know, he's he's a great creative mind that I like to talk to, especially offensively. So um, a lot of great guys I, I, I've got to coach with and I think that's kind of kept me really into this this profession it's really been that that camaraderie that uh that networking with mm -hmm. other coaches and doing that so do you ever have an opportunity to to talk with uh, coach goodwood at seymour um i i did a couple times mm -hmm. um you know there towards the end uh before i was leaving you know he uh was getting sick and we didn't really sure. see him as much but sure. we did see him in my first couple of years we did see him quite a bit like the region Timmy he was always right. he was always there always coming around talk right. football that kind of stuff right um, you know a, another one would be uh, Gene Sartini in Providence yes there for you know 40 years I right. believe and um, you know he was around all the time mm -hmm. all the time and it was great to you know get to talk to him and kind of you know yeah. hear his different stories about football you know because I grew up playing Providence Providence was our rival right when I was at Clarksville sure. so that was a one of those weird things of being a coach there for the first year it's like man I'm I don't know if I'm supposed to be excited or <laughs> if I'm supposed to hate this or what. So, uh, but no, getting to know Gene and, and uh, yeah, getting to talk to Goodman a little bit. Uh, you know, those are some great football minds to be able to talk to. You look at guys like that that have been around the game for so long and the the advancement of the game and, and the game changes periodically, you know, the, the different mindsets, the younger mindsets that come in. But to listen to the, well, when I was coaching and back in those days, and 
Those are great stories to hear. Absolutely, absolutely. I, lo I love hearing those stories because the funny thing is, is that you know when you talk about philosophy or how the game is, you know, that things haven't really changed. Just like the name of something or, or what right. what it kind of looks like, or little tweaks here and there, but it's still the same game. If that's the great thing about it, is yeah, know, those guys can teach you so much. Right, and you're right. It goes back to the uh, well, we we did it the same way. We just calling it something different yeah. now, and so. You decided now it's it's time to be a head coach. What drove that mentality to you? Um, you know, there's you, you get the opportunity to learn from a lot of good coaches, mm -hmm. and at this point in my career, you know, it was one of those things that um, it was always been a dream of mine. Sure. You know, when I first started out, I was like, sure. you know, when when can I get my own program? When can I start? When can I start? You know. Uh, putting my thumbprint on something mm -hmm. um, and really try to build a program. Right. So uh, that was that was kind of the these last couple of years. It was like you know I, I, after coordinating a little bit, now getting to coordinate all three sides of the ball right. in my career. It was one of the things is I can do this. You know I, I think I'm confident now. Is I wanted to be really patient um, with choosing where I became a head coach. Right. Um, you know I, there were several opportunities I could have tried. Um, and it really just never seemed like it was a good fit, so I didn't apply. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was looking for the right fit, right. to be honest. And it wasn't about resume building. It wasn't about uh, just being a head coach and having that title. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a very, uh, a very special title to have. And so I'm, I'm extremely honored that Madison chose me. And I, this is a place that I, you know, I definitely see myself growing and, um, you know, building a program here. Madison, uh, again. Uh it, it's been a, a uh, kind of a rocky road with football a little bit. It's not had great success, but it's had success. And you look at that and you look at the HHC, boy, what a great conference. Oh, man. It, it is a very competitive conference. That is that is for sure. Um, you know, and yes, uh, there hasn't been a, a ton of success here. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, what I've told the kids and what we've had in coaching staff meetings is, you know, we're here to compete mm -hmm. and, and every day you know, in practice, uh, in the weight room. Uh, and then when it gets to Friday nights, that's that's all I expect. We're right. gonna compete. Right. And and that's that's the most important part. Um, but the AGC, very tough conference, you know, being the smallest school, uh, we are gonna compete against some big schools. And, um, but I'm very familiar with that. You know, it's, right. it's one of those things that, you know, there has been some coaching changes uh, in the conference mm -hmm. these last couple of years. But, um, you know, I think we can compete here. I think we can we can compete with these HHC schools, and uh, it's it's a great conference to be in. Um, as I said, very competitive. You get the job, at Madison, kind of late in the game, as as, as the saying goes, kind of come in with uh, both feet on the ground and running quick this summer. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I was prepared for that. Uh, I, I've actually been preparing uh, for a head coaching job for a couple of years now mm -hmm. kind of putting together playbooks sure. installation schedules um, you know a summer schedule that kind of stuff so that was one thing that uh, having those mentors again talk me through some of that stuff right. and I was able to come in and, and really just get the ball rolling from day one I uh, was prepared to have this late start and uh, so been at it for about three weeks now and we just completed our third week, and um, so it's it's uh, it's been fun so far, and I'm really excited to continue the rest of the summer and get to the season. We always talk about numbers. You know, everybody wants huge numbers, and I'm going to go back to Columbus East as an example because they seem to bring two or three busloads of kids, and they've got more kids they know what to do with. More for you, it's it's the premium uh, side of the things where may not have as many numbers but you've got some quality kids absolutely uh, right now uh, our, our senior class has, has been very uh, uh, vocal been very uh, you know they've shown a lot of leadership sure um, and uh, guys like Noah Caswell Bryce Foy uh, Jonah Nichols um, they're every day you know pushing other players helping the young guys out uh, really uh, really putting in the time and um, I got a couple of young, you know underclassmen uh, Trenton Barnes you're gonna be a junior and he's uh, been a great uh, leader so far and really putting in a lot of hard work this summer so we, I got a great group of kids right now that are there uh, and, and putting in maximum effort maximum energy bringing positive attitude you know to the program which is which is what I want and we want to compete you guys I mean your, your official practice doesn't start for, for a few weeks now however as coaches have always told me and, and as, as it goes now is the time where you really make the strides to make yourself better. Yes. Yeah, so in the summertime, it's it's one of those things we kind of focus on the fundamentals, the technique. Um, we can we can really take that time to uh, really zone in on that stuff, and it's not 
fully scheme based. Now a little bit, we're kind of a little bit doing a little both because again, like the late right. start that we've had, um, and, and getting them used to the new way of doing things as far as offense and defense and and stuff like that. But um, yes, no, definitely. Um, you know, we we trying to focus on how can we get better technique-wise fundamentals, and then as we get closer to the season, we'll really start hammering home the, the scheme of it and making sure we're starting to solidify that stuff. Always here, we want to be bigger, faster, stronger, and I've seen some 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 tweets that's been posted about you know kids in the weight room yeah. and working hard and trying to get bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you know, and realistically, the, one of the things that's kind of molded me a little bit here recently, especially in the weight room, um, you know, is trying to build the overall athlete too. You know, a lot of times, especially uh, in a lot of schools now, you get those multi-sport athletes, sure. and you know, it's so, you, you know, you can't just build them as a great football player. They got to be right. a great basketball player, great, you know, volleyball player. They got to be a great tennis player. You know, the, whatever right. they're participating, and you want them to be great at it. So, um, you know, building that overall athlete in the weight room is is very important. So, uh, we we try to design our workouts towards building those athletes, getting those kids prepared to to play a year long season if they're three sport athletes. So Yeah, and you look at, at spending time in the weight room in the summer and there's so many things going on and vacations and this and this and this and this and you know that that piece of the pie dedication that kids need to have sometimes it's hard to come by and you always see the ones that are really serious about it the ones that are are as consistent as they possibly can be coming absolutely uh and you know as we we talked about before you know madison these last two weeks is extremely busy mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff going on we got regatta and, and of course we did a fundraiser down there um you've got fair going on this week i mean it's it's a, it's a crazy time in Madison, and yes, so we have a lot of kids who participate in that. Um, I spoke with one of our uh, managers last night who had three pigs in the fair, you know, so she hasn't yeah. been there all this week, but right. that's great. I want those kids to be able to do that. That's, sure. it's, it, you know, it gives them a little bit of a break, a little mental break, physical mm -hmm. break, lets them go do something else, and then they come back and, and they're a little bit more refreshed, um, especially with the dead week in there as well. You look at, at the facilities over here as well, and I know they've done a lot of improvements on the facilities football field, practice field, weight room, that kind of thing. Real good facilities in Madison. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we have a brand new weight room coming in here mm -hmm. in the next couple months um, that, uh, you know, Coach Jay Roney was able to uh, help, you know, facilitate and get in there. And, you know, so it's going to be brand new, start of the school year. It's going to be awesome. Um, so that's going to really help push athletics as a whole right. uh, forward. So, and yeah, definitely. I love the, love the, the old grass field. You know, the last yeah. several years I've been on turf, so it's right. a little bit, uh, it's definitely been an adjustment to get back to being on the grass and, you know, trying to prepare when there's going to be rain and all that kind of stuff. But uh, no, definitely love, love the facilities around here for sure. You, you, you take uh, you, you, your kids and, and you put them in the weight room and, and, and you get them out on the field. Can you, as a, as a coach, can you tell the, the difference that, that they've, the time that has been spent in a weight room or or you know doing things on their own that improve their skills going out on the field absolutely um the last i don't know uh well the last three weeks i mean you to see the improvement from day one to right. now day 12 mm -hmm. um you know they they've put in a lot of time and, and have really uh, accepted the challenge of something new right and, and that's what one thing i love about this team right now is that they are they accepted the challenge they they, they crave that competitiveness and uh they really bring it every day you 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 see these athletes and and again coming in and doing what they need to do and then uh, hopefully you want as most coaches do you want that to kind of snowball to other kids so other kids will be interested in coming out and participating in the program yeah and one trend that i've always seen no matter where i've been um, you know, you have you have the the influx of kids come as soon as clo you know closer to school starting sure. too, especially the freshman class. So, right. um, you know, right now, numbers isn't extremely important. Sure. Of course, you'd like to have as many kids out there as you can, but you know, right now, it's kind of one of those things that we're going to work with what we got, and, and we're going to get better. And you know, as the more kids come in, we'll just introduce them to it, get them started, and um, you know. Get them ready. What's uh, what's on tap then for the for the rest of the summer for your your group? So we're going to start uh, team camp Monday, mm -hmm. and we have a it's a five day long team camp. Most of the time we're going to go four days mm -hmm. for the rest of the summer, but this week we go five. Uh, we have three days scheduled at Hanover. Uh, talking with Coach Theobald, he has three days over there to where we can kind of change the environment a little bit, sure. get the kids in a different place to learn football. There's one thing that I've found being a teacher even for the last three years. Uh, you know, if you can change the environment or change the, just the way the classroom looks sometimes, you know, it really changes the learning environment a little bit. So um, definitely want, I'm glad we we're able to take advantage of that, and, and thank you to Coach Theobald for that. And uh, so we're really excited this. And then, you know, after that, we're going to have a couple more weeks, and then season starts August 
5th. Yeah. And we're going to be going right at it. And then you know, get school starting a couple weeks after that. So um, very, very excited. The summer's going to be very busy. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, got a lot of work to do before Paoli. Let's kind of talk about your... Uh, some of your philosophies or your style, as it will, your style of football. What kind of what do you focus on? Um, well, offensively, um, we are spread football team, but uh, power mindset, mm -hmm. downhill running. You know, I, I tell the guys uh, our, our our motto when we run the football: three and a half yards carry. That's mm -hmm. what we want. Uh, you know, obviously you want you like having more than that. Sure, but sure. if you think about it, three runs in a row, three and a half yards, that's over 10 yards. Right. We got a first down. Sure. So uh, having that mentality, uh, and that was one thing that I gained when I was at Providence, is that, that mentality of three and a half yards and you get the job done. Mm -hmm. And so and they've embraced that for sure, especially up front offensive line, really embrace that mentality. Um, so we are going to be, you know, up tempo, uh, no huddle type team, mm -hmm. um, but with a power mindset, you know, and uh, defensively right now, uh, play fast. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're going to be in a 3-3 a, a three, three stack and uh, we're going to play downhill and we're gonna, just going to go. You know, there's not going to be um, a lot of blitzing. You're not going to see a lot of fancy stuff on defense. We're going to line up, we're going to get a read, and we're going to play, mm -hmm. we're going to play fast. And they showed that uh, when we did our competition here this past Thursday night and really ha have embraced that mentality as well. How hard is it? How difficult is it? How big of a challenge is it to get kids from a coach to another, and I don't care who the coach is, but when you go from one coach to the next coach and you're trying to change the, the style of play, is it difficult to get kids to embrace that? Um, you know, I haven't seen that yet. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been difficult so far. Um, I think the learning curve is the terminology, right. um, the, the system, if you will. Uh, I know before they huddled, things like that. So mm -hmm. learning signals, learning uh, to to run plays a little bit differently. Um, so there is that little bit of a learning curve, but right now the, at the speed that we're going, we're taking it kind of slow, right. uh, not really trying to install the whole playbook in sure. three weeks kind of thing. So right. uh, they, they've really responded well to that. And I really haven't seen too many, uh, too many hiccups with that. And with the kids that are there every day, they're really picking it up. You feel like kids want to play a faster game or a slower game in today's world? Uh, well, the faster game is the fancy way. You right. Know, it's, it's the new right now, and uh, so you see it all on TV. Sure. You know, you see even the NFL is starting to go to it a little bit more. Um, so that, that up-tempo, fast-paced offense, I think the kids really enjoy it. It's, um, it's the trend right now. Um, but I've been around athletes who love the, the slow grind of huddling up, taking the full play clock and just going and, right. you know, full go and then doing it all over again the next play. So, sure. you know, I, I think – Athletes do tend to trend towards the up-tempo, fast-paced offense just because it's, it's it's fun. It, it, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Do you do you see this team? Um, you know, when when you make your transition to to go and I mean, go go go. Uh, you know, you, you you talk about that fast pace, but physicality comes into play a little bit as well. Absolutely, and we uh, we've been very physical. We, well, that's the one thing that we we coach up the, the intensity, the physicality of the game. Um, it, it has to be there because mm -hmm. no matter what offense you run, no matter what defense you run, it does not matter. If you can't right. be physical, you can't play this game. Right. Uh, you're not going to be successful at it. Um, so w physicality is one of those top priorities in the game of football, period. So we definitely talk about that and, and be able to impose our will uh, on the opposing team for yeah. sure. The, the up-tempo game, how did that kind of become your little niche in coaching? Sure. I was at Providence. We ran. We huddled. Mm -hmm. We we ran power offense. We were in for my first year's offense coordinator. We were double tight mm -hmm. and just running downhill. Right. Uh, when I came to Seymour and got to coach with Josh Shattuck, he kind of introduced me to um, a, a lot of the the no huddle stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd been researching a little bit on my own, kind of looking into it, but just never really found my niche with it. Right. Um, so he helped me out a ton in mm -hmm. that. And there was a lot of things that I picked up from just that one year with him. And, and it really kind of helped mold my overall offense into that, that up tempo and just seeing um, how vanilla defenses sometimes have to get, right. depending on how fast you're going. Sure. And, and be able to know that when you're doing that, I, you know, I can control the speed. If we want to go fast, we can go fast. If I want to slow it down and kind of just see how they're reacting, we can slow down. Right. So it's one of those things that having that no huddle mentality, it's, it, there's a lot more control um, in that, so which is yeah. nice. And, and then you're asking the kids, everybody's got to be on the same page. 
Absolutely. In a hurry. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and they've really picked up on that. And, you know, we have uh, the skill guys have to all know the signals. Sure. Um, so our offensive linemen are, are, they don't have to look back. They don't have to get into a stance, out of a stance, all that kind of stuff. So um, we use a different array of code words, things like that, that we, we share with the offensive linemen so they sure. know what's going on right. and um, just kind of get that cohesiveness of the game. So we, we rep that in different ways in practice. The O-line and the D-line, of course, we talk about bigger, faster, stronger, but the O-line and the D-line, a lot of emphasis put on them because a lot of it, it starts right there. Absolutely. Offensive line, most important position on the field. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, without them, we don't move the ball. So uh, a lot of emphasis put there. And we've got a lot of guys rotating in through different spots trying to get a feel for where they fit. Mm -hmm. um, defensive line, same thing. Uh, you know, with the 3-3 three, three stack, we have three defensive linemen. So they're kind of up front controlling the offensive line, trying to keep them off of uh, the linebackers, you know, trying right. to take up double teams as they can kind sure. of thing. It makes it a little bit easier mm -hmm. uh, for, our, for our linebackers. So, you know, definitely uh, up front in the trenches, that's where, uh, you know, a lot of the – uh, a lot of the pounding goes on, and those right. guys, they, they, they accept that role. They really love that role. See, let's look at the schedule a little bit. This is, as, as a guy that's been around this program for a long time, this is a different schedule than I've seen before with, with how it's been adjusted. Yeah, with the with the adjustments to the HHC schedule, it's kind of changed it up a little bit uh, for two years. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, like we won't see Floyd Central for two years. Um, but uh, definitely uh, heavy in the back end, mm -hmm. for sure. sure. Um, uh, but you like having that competition right before spe sectional time especially. Right. Um, but uh, overall, you know, starting off on the road for two weeks and then finally getting to have our home opener week three. Um, so really excited about that. Uh, but yeah, it, the, the schedule is a little bit different, especially uh, with only three home games. Mm -hmm. um, that is something I haven't seen before. <laughs> right. But I know with the, with the conference schedule and the adjustments, things like that, um, that, you know, that's going to be the case for these two years. And then we'll kind of get more back to a balanced schedule after that. Talk about the conference and everything. All the conversations typically start with Columbus East. Yeah, they do. And, and you know, it it's it's tough not to when you've yeah. had the success that they've had sure. um so right now you know i I've, I've heard that for the last three years or so and right. you know trying to uh, always going back to columbus season for me you know they're in order to be the top dog you know you got to beat the top dog i get that um but right now you know for us focusing on us focusing on getting better every day uh and really just competing day in and day out and, and really getting that mentality across um will help us get there one day um, but right now, you know, that's kind of our, our central focus is, is Madison football right now. Do you look at your, your, your players and, and think, I need to adjust my, my mental playbook, if, if you will, to, to my players, or are you going to try to adjust your players to what you want them to do? Oh, no, uh, it's, it's always adjusting to the players. Personnel, sure. av evaluation every day, mm -hmm. um, seeing what we have. Um, you know, we as a coaching staff, we, we try to evaluate players every day anyway, right. um, based on their position, based on depth chart, things like that. So there's constant evaluation going on. Um, but no, when I when I put my playbook together, uh, to be completely honest with you, I put it together for multiple types of personnel sure. because it, if you if you can't adjust to the players, then you really can't be successful. Uh, you know, if, if you're if you're a double tight team but you're trying to run spread, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's really difficult to do that. Sure. So um, you know, it's one of those things that. It, it took me a long time to get to that point to be able to find schemes that I can run in different types of personnel groups and things like that. So, um, and but yes, no, always, always to the personnel. It doesn't matter what the success factor is here at Madison. Crowds are always great at home, and I know that's got to make a coach happy. Absolutely, you know, in the in the three away games, so in the three games that I've been here as an opposing coach, mm -hmm. um, one as a Charlestown coach, and then two as Seymour. Um, you know, it is definitely an unbelievable atmosphere mm -hmm. and uh you know unfortunately the, the last two times i was here is during fall break week so the kids were gone so there wasn't there was right. students but man the the community still packed the house for mm -hmm. for a night game week nine mm -hmm. you know kind of thing so um you know you start getting the you know when you actually get the lights on the first quarter all that kind of stuff right. so it's it's really great atmosphere and I, i'm really uh, looking forward to that that first friday night game at home and, and having those having those fans behind us uh for that first home game you're going to be teaching where? Uh, at the high school. At the high at school. At the high school. I'm going to teach math, uh, and I also have a, a weights class. So I'll be teaching a weights class as well. And that's 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 always a plus. As, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Can't wait to get in there and, yeah. and do that as well. Coach, we appreciate coming by this morning. We'll talk to you again during the middle of the season. Of course, we'll see you every Friday night. Right. Thank you, Tim. Go Cubs. All right. Go Cubs indeed. That's Coach Leroy Wilson talking with us this morning at uh, Coach's Corner live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. Join us next Saturday. We'll do it again at 9 a.m. right here from McDonald's. Again, thanks to Jordan Bear. I'm Tim Torrance on Works 96.7. This is a bag. But for Steve, this bag gives him food cred.
Because now everyone knows that when they have that craving, or they're just looking for the perfect deal, well, they just need to follow Steve.